recent videos most of the videos have been like how to do this how to do that or most of the time has been working with the technology and process and I badly miss encoding in my videos so today I want to take a different route and get into a little bit of coding uh, in the recent project that I was doing I was supposed to do some work with the uh, .NET Core and create an XUnit project for unit testing. Uh, to my surprise, I couldn't find a clear video on YouTube that goes over the uh, process of using XUnit from Visual Studio straightforward. So basically, I had to dig a little bit into it to find what I was looking for. So today I want to create a simple .NET Core project. This project is gonna be a class library and I want to create a unit test for it and make it completely ready for continuous deployment. Let's get into it. To start our unit test, we need to create a project in Visual Studio first. So let's open Visual Studio and create a new project. So file menu, new project. And the project is gonna be .NET Core, and I want to create a class library. Technically, you can use any one of these project templates. And I want to call it Finance Calculator. And I click on OK. This project has just one class. I just changed the class name to C Test, for example, whatever I want to call it. It asks me to change the class name. I'm fine with that. And I just add one function to this class. I've already typed the function, so I just stick it here. This function is called get order category. So if the amount that it receives is below 100, it returns a small. And if the amount is above 100, it returns large. So we created a project in Visual Studio. Right after we create our project, we need to create a test project. So I get back to Visual Studio. I right click on the solution add new project and this time the project is going to be x unit test project which is uh, actually the unit testing project type specifically designed for dotnet core so for this one i call it finance unit test and i click ok the unit test is created. You usually see this warning. It takes a little while, sometimes a couple of seconds. As you can see, it disappears as soon as it uh, sorts out the NuGet packages. Next step is going to be update NuGet packages to the latest version. Usually you are working with a team, so we want everything to be in sync. So when we start a project, we want to update the NuGet packages to the last version. To update the NuGet packages, I right click on every one of these projects. I click on manage NuGet packages. As you can see here, there are three updates available for these NuGet packages for the test unit. I just click on all the updates, select all packages, and I update it. I just accept it, accept, and all the packages are updated. Same thing for the other project. Right click, manage NuGet packages, if there is anything for to be updated. So we don't have anything, we are pretty much up to date when it comes to .NET Core. So I just leave it the same way as it is. We complete the two steps. Third step is add project GUID to all projects. If I take you back to the old projects that we use, let me just create a dummy project, like a new project, not of .NET Core, but if we go to, for example, web, I create an ASP.NET Web application, not .NET Core. And whatever the name is, I just want to show you a sample, MVC, and I just say, OK. The project is created. So I go to the File Explorer. OK, here's the project folder. And inside this project folder, if I find the web application CSProj, I right click on it and I just open it with Notepad. These classic projects had project GUID. This is the ID that project is identified by this when you send it to TFS or any source control. 
But when they come to the .NET Core projects, they don't have the GUID. As a result, when you upload it to TFS and you want to set up the server-side build, it complains or the projects are not identified. So one of the steps that you need to manually complete for every one of these .NET Core projects, including the test, you need to right-click on it. So we click on Edit Project. And on the property group, you need to add the project GUID. So we simply add it here. And for the value, I just go to the tools, GUID, create GUID, whatever the ID is, registry format, copy, and I just paste it here. Same thing for our finance calculator, which is again .NET Core. And on the property group, I add the project GUID, and again, I go back to the GUID generator, create new ID, copy, and paste it here. To run your test locally, you don't need this, but if you want to deal with the TFS and source control, you have to add the project GUID. Now, you need to go to your XUnit project and make a reference to the class library or to any project that you want to do the unit test on. So I go back to my Visual Studio, add reference, and I just, under solution, I make a reference to the finance calculator, which is actually the project that I want to do the unit test on, which is our next step. Add the unit testing code. I go back to my Visual Studio. First thing I want to call this test, small amount test. I want to perform some more tests. Again, every test has exactly the same format or exactly the same signature. So I would say fact and public void, and I call it large amount test. Same thing. Now, we know that below 100 and above 100 is where we define small and large. What about 100 itself? So I just say public void amount 100. And don't forget to include the fact. Now let's write the test. So to write the test, let's go back and take a look at our class. The class has a namespace called finance calculator then it's under a class called ctest. And because the function is a static, we really don't need to create an instance of this class. So I go back to our test. And under test, for every single one of these functions, we need to specify two different variables. So the first variable is type string expected value. And I just leave it blank for now, string actual value, again, I leave it blank. Actual value should get the value from this function. So we come back, let me close this. So I go back under unit test, it equals finance calculator dot C test, and the function name is get order category. I need to specify an amount. For the small amount, I pick, for example, 20. If the amount is small, so if it is 20, we expect that function return the value small. Now we need to add the test solution to compare these values. So assert dot equals. Now equal function has two parameters, expected and actual. Apparently, if you change the order, it shouldn't really matter. But the reality is that when you review the test result, you really want to see which value was expected and what you got. So although they are, they are supposed to be equal, and if they are equal, the test passes, the order by which you put there is going to affect your error. So just follow the signature. The first value is going to be expected. So I say expected value and the second value is going to be 
the second parameter is going to be actual value the rest is going to be easy I just copy and paste for the large amount the expected value is large amount that I want to pass for example I say 250 and again we compare the values for the last part I expect to get large and the actual value I just pass 100 and see what it gives us because I go to the functional spec as a tester and I say okay you know what 100 and above is going to be large so we actually added three unit tests to this function for three different conditions we have done with adding the unit testing code now we need to run the test so let me get back to the project inside the project we go to the test and under window we open the test explorer and now you can clearly see there are three tests each one of them represents one of these functions that we created let's run all and see how it works here is a summary one test failed two tests passed so the past tests are large and small amount passed amount 100 failed if I click on it I clearly see I was expecting large and the actual that I got was nothing what's going on so let's go back to the test and see what's actually going on we go here and I say oh okay so if it is smaller than 100 it returns small if it is larger than 100 it returns large but there is nothing checking for equal so let me change this condition and say it. if it is greater than equal or equal to 100 it should return large let me just save it now again I go back to the test explorer and again I say run all it rebuilds the solution and it runs all the tests again now I see all the tests are successful and things are in good shape I personally prefer to run the test uh, in a on the command prompt so if you want to run it on the command prompt select your unit test get the project folder go back to your command prompt and go to that folder when you are there run .NET test it builds a solution and it runs a test on the command line and it tells me all the tests are successful the reason that I prefer this because Visual Studio page by itself is busy enough so I really don't want to add one more thing to this page and I regularly run the unit test whenever I make changes okay that was it that was just the basics of uh, creating unit test and using the X unit I'm pretty sure most of you if you're developers you have already used unit tests in the previous project so uh, this video was mainly about how to bring up to speed your knowledge if you want to utilize X unit thank you for watching and stay tuned till the next video